We're going to be tying a clink hammer style uh, March Brownie merger pattern. I'm going to start off with a 2488 number 12 hook, 6 aught black uni thread. Going to make a nice thread wrap base all the way down. In this instance, a little bit past the barb, kind of onto the bend part of the hook. Cut off our tag end. We make a small tail out of lemon wood duck fibers. Clump that a little tiny bit. I'm going to measure it approximately the same length as the hook shank. Cut off our stub ends there. I'm going to tie in a fine copper wire rib. I'm going to kind of run that wire as I tie it in kind of along the hook shank up to about the halfway point. Next I'm going to take some uh, awesome possum dubbin in the natural color, kind of a brown tan. It's wet, it has a real close coloration to the naturals. Wind a small dubbing and fur dubbing. I choose fur dubbing in this instance because I want it to absorb a little bit of water instead of a you know classic dry fly style polypropylene dubbing. Helps sink the back end of this fly just a little tiny bit. So I've wound a nice little body on there. I'll take my copper ribbing and the wind over the top of it. Lock that down. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, we've got some spooled antron in chartreuse here. And I've laid it on top of itself to make about three layers, three different individual strands stacked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to tie it right in the center. Approximately equal lengths. So then once I tie it in the center, I'm just going to fold that wing straight up. And make some thread wraps around the base to post that up. So one problem a lot of people have in their tying parachute patterns is that that post wants to spin a little tiny bit on them. A good buddy of mine, as I've said in other videos, taught me a little trick. So I take a little bit of Zappa Gap, put a teeny tiny drop on the end of my bodkin and then I take the drop and I put it right at the base where the thread wraps and the antron meet and pretty much instantaneously you've got a rock solid post. Adds a little bit of weight possibly with the glue, most of it I feel like it evaporates off. You get arguments both ways but I've found this to be pretty effective. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brown uh, rooster hackle and I'm going to tie that in kind of on the, the right side of the post to start with and then on the left side so I have the feather kind of extending off the back. Final step is to, one of the final steps here I guess, is, is to dub a little bit of a, a thorax. We want that thorax ideally to be just a little bit bigger than the abdomen that we tied. Now we're going to take that hackle, we're going to make wraps around that post. If you're fishing, you know, heavy water, you're going to want more hackle on it. If you're fishing real spring creaky style stuff, um, you know, a little, little bit less. Just kind of come over the top of that brown hackle. Take my fingers, move all that hackle out of the way. Tie up a little bit of a head. Cut my 
tagging. Kind of take those pieces of antron and spread them out. That'll help uh, stack the hackle just a little bit more. Last step, second to last step, I guess, is going to be use my whip finisher to finish off the head. Last but not least, trim that post down. Give yourself just a little hot spot for those of us with eyes that don't see as well as they used to. And there you have a finished March Brown clink hammer style emerger pattern.